I left the NFL, moving into the organized world of corporate America, and you know what I found is most companies are winging it. They're just winging it. And I look at you here today as I have a chance to speak to you. I look at you and I equate you as a football team. Why would I not equate you as a football team with my background, right? Think about a football team for a moment. 22 guys on a field that desperately need rest. They're being watched by 70,000 people who desperately need exercise. <laughs> there you go. And can I ask you a question, where would you rather be? Seriously, where would you rather be? I don't want to sit in the stands. I don't want to watch life go by. I want to be in the game. I want to advance the ball down the field against great obstacles. I want to succeed with my teammates. I want to be part of something bigger than just me. Now let me ask you a question as we go on to learn some things. Why is it? Why is that some companies don't get it? Why, why? I ask myself, why don't they get it? Why don't organizations, teams, individuals, why are they challenged? Why can't they go live on their go side? And you'll notice something as I take you through a teaching a lesson here, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Is I, I don't need... He was inspiring. I mean, he said you have to inspire other people. And, and I wanted inspiration, but I realized I can get that by inspiring others. You know, I have to try to inspire people. I think it'll help. He inspires us to be leaders, and I think that's what we forget about. Passionate, um, motivating, inspiring, uh, moving. Ladies and gentlemen, who are you? And where are you going? And where are you going to end up and what's life really all about? And the reason that I ask that question of you is because the people that you lead in your organizations and even the kids that may reside in your homes are asking you that and you need an answer for it. They may not verbalize those words in that fashion, but they're saying basically, hey, Dad, Mom, where are we going? And what does the future look like? And how are we going to get there? And who's going to lead us? And you need an answer for it. Let's see if I can put a spin on it. Let's just see if I can throw it this way at you in a business vernacular. Ladies and gentlemen, see if answers for these questions. Here they are. Ready for it? What's the picture of your future? H how, do you, how do you focus your energy? How do you get your teammates to focus their energy? What motivates you? Do you know what really motivates you in trying difficult times in front of your team? What do you do to put the gears in place to actually overcome the challenges at that moment? Do you have an answer for that? And let me throw out the kicker of all. If I ask this question of you and you answer it in spades, you win hands down. I've been to enough companies and worked with enough organizations to know that those who understand this question win. You ready for it? What is it that you... How about this? I'll, I'll bet you a buck in this entire audience there's not one person in this room that's thinking of one million chickens right now. <laughs> no way. It's an impossibility. You're looking at one million, and you're thinking one million dollars, one million bucks. Who wants to be a millionaire? That's what you're thinking, right? Because there's power in words and numbers. And this is how it works. Words create pictures. Your birthday, birthday, your anniversary, a client you just reeled in. Pictures then do this. They create with them an emotion. There's something attached to that when you talk about a birthday or an anniversary or a new client. There's joy, there's exhilaration, there's excitement, there's anticipation, but there's an emotion. Emotions and what they do is they create attitudes. An attitude, ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, it's simply the way in which we lean towards something. We're leaning towards our go side or towards our stop side every time we speak to somebody. Every time you're talking to someone, every time you're trying to gain a new account, that person is formulating pictures in their mind that are attached to an emotion, that create an attitude, that permit a behavior. A behavior is simply the attitude or the action that I take after an attitude is formed. What happens next is behaviors create habits. And habits create reality. And reality creates you and me. May I say this, and I see many of you taking notes, and you may wish to write this down. Successful people have simply formed the habits. He has a certain way about him. He, you can tell that he used to be a quarterback. He, he inspires you. He makes you feel motivated. The point came across real well, again, as I said, it's because it was coming from his heart. His messages were profound, but real. What are those things that cause us to go? What are the things that cause great companies and teams and organizations and families to stay on their go and grow side consistently? I'm going to share three of them with you here today. And the first is this. I find that great individuals, companies, organizations, and teams, what they do is they create a vision and then they chase a dream. 
Let me see if I can make sense of this because this is so important. It is the freedom to dream a dream and manage that dream into a reality. It's creating a belief system that is so powerful that it moves you and your team from a present place where you happen to be to a future place of more value. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a vision statement for yourself, a personal vision statement, that moves you forward every day, that you can communicate with me in two minutes or less that would wow me as I sat on an elevator with you? Do you have one? Can I tell you something? You need one. People are looking at you. 